Right, hello and welcome to oh, Right, hello and welcome to yet another video on the channel. This time it's the match preview for the home game against Sheffield United at the Stadium of Light on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. And um, before we start, just do us a massive favour, hit that thumbs up please and subscribe if you're new. Um, let's get this straight, started off straight away with the score predictions from our surprising win against Norwich. I didn't see it coming, and I don't know how many of you didn't see it coming, but we got the win away at Carroll Road, 1 0 victory. Very good performance by the lads. Um, shocked a lot of people, especially me. But the four people who got the correct score prediction of 1 0 was Mr. C, Callum, Norman Longstaff, and DGW SEFC. So well done, you four. You four are the last four names to go in the hat to win the Ajax Three Birds shirt. Uh, in the giveaway because obviously we've reached 7,000 subscribers happy days just quickly I mean we've all spoke about it to death we did the live stream uh, like a little live chat yesterday as well Saturday, Sunday great performance a lot of people stepped up the mark or up their game Dan Neal in particular four dodgy games in a row and him and Mitchell had a brilliant game in the middle of the park Dan Neal winning lots of things got another yellow card but that's kind of part of Dan Neal's game Abdullah Bar with his first goal for Sunderland since he's come here brilliant well taken goal and I think he's uh, uh, I think he's, he's uh, showing to keep his um, keep his spot uh, tomorrow night against Sheffield United. Tony Mowbray has said Ahmad will not be featuring tomorrow, but he reckons Pritchard could be uh, named on the bench. We'll have to wait and see. The back four with the with the real stars on Sunday. Danny Bart, uh, he got my man of the match. And I believe he got it off Sky as well. Luke on and Mister Sunderland. He just he's just absolutely brilliant, and he. Let's be honest. I mean, that's why we all love him. Me in particular. Out, out of position, playing at the left back, had a bit neck on, and he was just phenomenal. Uh, throwing his body on the line, like the whole back four was just brilliant. It uh, was just really, really brilliant. No, it's a good attacking team, as are Sheffield United, who we have tomorrow night. They've scored a lot of goals this season. They've scored 56 goals this season. They've only conceded 32. Uh, they're second in the table, as we all know, on 67 points. Um, look, they're involved in a part of the second place now. Say if I was at an army. Eight weeks ago, you could have said they were in a battle for top spot. But I think Burnley have walked, uh, run away with it now. The 13 points clear. And Burra uh, chasing on the... Uh, well, they're hot on the heels of Sheffield United, if you will. They've won 21, uh, drew seven and lost nine games this season. Uh, the last five, lost one, lost one, lost. So if you're going to, if you're someone who likes to follow patterns, that does not bode well for us tomorrow night. But we will have to wait and see. Another point the thing to mention is their last five in all competitions, which is four league games and one uh, FA Cup game, they've all finished 1-0. Uh, three of them, four uh, in favour of Sheffield United and two of them against them. So, but it's all been 1-0, so all been very close games. Listen, we know Sheffield United are a very good team. We went there before. Earlier in the season, we got beat 2-1. Uh, it was a game where Lyndon Gooch scored that wonderful chip uh, from outside the box. And it was also, uh, we were the better team. We were playing really good football. Then Dan Neil got sent off, which changed the entire game. Um, we'll hope you, we could be looking for revenge. But you never know what's going to happen with Sunderland. Our home form hasn't been brilliant um, this season. Our, our away form has, but... You know... Um, it's, it's, it's horrible because of how many fans we get at the Stadium of Light. You'd love us... To be more deadly at home than you would away, um, but it's just one of those things. So we've been through this many times over the years where our home forms dip. But all we can do is try and build on the performance that we had on Sunday, hit the ground running, and hopefully the fans will get behind the lads. Uh, Sheffield United they've got the quarter final FA Cup on Saturday, so I'm hoping they'll have one eye on that. But even Mowbray mentioned that in his press conference, and he said that he fully expects Sheffield United to have their focus on the league because the league can get them. Uh, Premiership football, whereas the FA Cup can't. But obviously, it's still a FA Cup. It's the best cup, cup competition in the world, as many people say. So hopefully, they will have one eye on that game. Players to watch out for Sheffield United. There's quite a few that you can mention, but the main ones I'm going to mention is the two top goal scorers. You've got uh, Ndai and McBurney. They've both got 11 goals each. Ndai's got seven assists also, and McBurney's got two. Uh, one for McBurney, though. It, it, it's, it's risky whether he's going to be playing or not. Um, it's, he's not injured or anything like that but he's on nine yellow cards so if he gets a yellow against us tomorrow that means he misses the next two league games which could be vital in the running for Sheffield United if he doesn't get a yellow card in tomorrow's game then the, 
the yellow card thing doesn't count now for the rest of the season, so he's going to free run in for the rest of the season. Uh, there was some confusion with Danny Bart for Sunderland. Somebody put in the chat when we did the live stream on Sunday that because he because he, he'd get a, a yellow card that he would miss Wednesday's game, but it's not the case. It was just mis, uh, misinformation. Uh, uh, once you pass a certain point in the season, it then goes from five five yellows to ten. But if you get the ten, then you get two yellow cards. But the deadline for that is tomorrow's game. So McBurney might not be risked. Uh, if he is, he's got to be careful. He can't play his usual game. Otherwise, he, well, he's end up going to get banned for two games. Uh, another one that it's quite meh. He's been brilliant this season for them and he's huge. He's, uh, he's even taller than me. So as Paul would say, if I'm a giant, then he must be an even bigger giant. Uh, Sander Burge or Berg, however you are. Berger, however you pronounce it, who gives a shit. He's got five goals and three assists this season. But he's been a vital player uh, for their team this season. And another one I'm going to mention, and I don't know why I've chosen to mention this one, because God knows how you pronounce his name, but Ahmed Hadzic is a centre-half, he's got four goals and two assists this season. He's another big lad, he's a good footballer. Uh, I remember when we played him last time, uh, we played him last time and he, he kind of, he had a very good game. He might have even got out of the match, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, don't quote like that, but I think he did, but he's, he's a good player and he's very dangerous on set pieces and things like that, and he likes to bomb forward with the ball. Sheffield United are in a bit of a bad run at the minute. Well, you say a bad run. Considering where they were in the league, like how many points clear they were and things like that, I think at one point they were 12 points clear of Middlesbrough with a game in hand. And now they're on the same games. They're only four points ahead. So if we manage to get the win tomorrow and Middlesbrough uh, win their game, there's only one point in it. So Sheffield United have kind of thrown away a bit. Uh, but they've had a lot of games. Like We went through a spell where we were having... You know, a game at the weekend, game midweek, game at the weekend, game midweek. They've just, they're have they currently going through that because of their good FA Cup run. So hopefully they, I mean, it tired us out and we ended up going on a bit of a bad, bad run. Hopefully they'll be tired as well and we can take advantage of it. They'll be constantly looking over the shoulder at Middlesbrough because they are closing them down very, very fast. And like I've previously said, uh, they've got the FA Cup quarter final against Blackburn Rovers at the weekend. So... You never know. You never know. We've got to keep our fingers crossed. But although I am expecting a very tough game because Sheffield United are a very good team. Um, they've proved that they've got a lot of premiership quality still in their squad. Uh, and we always said at the start of the season they're going to be up there or thereabouts. They're still in second place. A lot of people are writing them off already, but they're still in second place. So they've got one foot there, but there's still quite a way to go. And hopefully we can dampen their chances. You never know. All right, moving on to Sutherland briefly because we've, we've covered some of it. Ahmed is not going to be fair featuring. Pritchard is possibly going to be on the bench. He's been training with the squad today. Certain's still not ready. Obviously, we know Elise is out. Stewart's out and Evans are out all for the rest of the season. I can personally see him keeping the same team that started against um, against Norwich on Sunday. It was a hell of a performance. Barr did brilliantly where obviously getting his first goal. He was all over the place and he was he was doing it game because Sheffield United are a very good team. Um, they've proved that they've got a lot of Premiership quality still in their squad. Uh, and we always said at the start of the season they're going to be up there or thereabouts. They're still in second place. A lot of people are writing them off already, but they're still in second place. So they've got one foot there, but there's still quite a way to go. And hopefully we can dampen their chances. You never know. All right, moving on to Sutherland briefly, because we've, we've covered some of it. Ahmed is not going to be fair featuring. Pritchard is possibly going to be on the bench. He's been training with the squad today. Certain's still not ready. Obviously, we know Elise is out, Stewart's out, and Evans are out all for the rest of the season. I can personally see him keeping the same team that started against um, against Norwich on Sunday. It was a hell of a performance. Barr did brilliantly where obviously getting his first goal. He was all over the place and he was he was doing he, he, he got his chance and he grabbed it with both hands and a lot of people were pleased with how he played. Gelhardt, he's been getting a lot of stick, but me personally, I thought he had a very good game. Um, we, he got a lot of stick or a lot of even I mentioned about he should have done better with that chance but haven't seen it back um, if you haven't had the chance to see it from the from the behind angle that Grant Hanley kicks him kicks uh, Gellhardt in the leg just before he takes his shot now a lot of people have still been saying he should do better um, I agree possibly he should but he still got kicked in the leg um, before he took the shot so like I said on Sunday yes, he'll be remembered for that miss however I remember him for his work rate, his closing down, his holding the ball up and the runs and the passes he was making. So yes, he's not banging the goals in for fun like what we all hope, but he's, he's, his goal contributions, I think he's got three or four assists or something like that. So he's, he is doing a part. 
Um, some people just need to go for his back a bit, in my personal opinion. But hey, I'm not going to tell people what to do. You know what I mean? Um, what else is there? Lugo 9, I think he's probably just keeping my left back. Uh, unless he changes the way we play. He might change the formation, we don't know, but I can't see it. Uh, he'll keep Lugo 9 at left back. But it's good to see Lyndon Gooch is back in the fold. Um, he came on off the uh, came off the bench on Sunday. And after the game, he didn't have uh, any repercussions or anything. He felt great after the game. So he'll be on the bench, I'd imagine, uh, tomorrow. And yeah, I think, like I said, I think the team's going to be going to be the same again. Uh, it knows it's itchy as hell and it's doing me nothing. I think the team's going to be the same. Um, Pritchard probably be brought in on the bench and hopefully us the fans will be there all wrapped up because I'm expecting them to be freezing and hopefully we can act as the 12th man and really spur them on having said that <laughs> having said that Sheffield United are a good team and we're not the best team at home they're on a bit of a dodgy run and now in my past experience some of you will probably agree if you're a team and you're in a bit of a bad run of form the team that you want to play is Sunderland. Just like if you're a striker and you haven't scored a goal for 30 games, you want to play against Sunderland because you're guaranteed to score goals. You're guaranteed if you're the team that's in a bad run, you're going to, you, chances are you're going to get the win. I'm still cautious because, yes, we had but three bad results prior to Norwich. Yes, we played well against Norwich and I'm over the moon. We did a proud of all the lads and we came away with a win. I think tomorrow as well. But I think tomorrow, I think Sheffield United is going to be... I think they're going to be more physical. I think uh, Mowbray mentioned that um, the way they got beat off Luton, the managers, the picker and uh, picker, really, the bloody hands, eh? Eggerbottom wasn't happy with the way they played and he's going to be giving them a rotten up their arse. They're going to be playing, he's expecting them to come out physical, strong and really bring the game to us, which doesn't normally work in our favour. Listen, I, I said this against Norwich and I, I, was, I said I hope I'm wrong and I was and I was over the moon. My score prediction, I'm going for 2-1 Sheffield United. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that's just how we go. I went for that with Norwich and uh, we got the win, so I was happy. And hopefully I'm wrong again tomorrow, but this is a competition. And unfortunately, I, I am going to predict 2-1 Sheffield United. Paul's prediction, I believe he said it last night when we did the uh, live chat. I think he's went another 1-0 win uh, for Sunderland. I, I hope he's right. I do, I hope he's right. Um, but... I think it's going to be a very, very tough game. I'll be over the moon if we get a result. I said at the start of these four games, like before the Norwich game, I'd be happy with six over the next four, six points out of the next four games. We've got three on Sunday. You never know what's going to happen. Two home games off the bounce, and then we've got Burnley away. Listen, I hope we prove everybody wrong, and I hope we get the results. Hope we get these points, but you never know. <laughs> it's never been easy being a Southern supporter, has it? So, this is your last chance to enter the with your score predictions to win to be in the draw which is going to be done uh, either Saturday or later on in the week we're going to do the draw for the for the shirt giveaway so this is the last game for you to get your name in that hat so comment below what you think of it any, if, there's, if you think there's going to be any changes or if you would make any changes and also more importantly get your score predictions in below so like I said at the start if you haven't already hit the thumbs up subscribe if you're new we're over the moon we just hit 7,000 subscribers and that's thanks to you lot so thank you very much again um, and as Paul said the other day I suppose it's on the road at 8k now isn't it thank you very much away the lads I hope my prediction's wrong see you tomorrow